Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today I am showing you how to do my shoe bags or my storage bags. So these are an expandable bag. So on the side they have a little bit of a, a fold on the side and that actually makes the bags expand quite well. So you'll fit in a pair of shoes, you'll fit a bottle of wine, you'll fit both a pair of shoes and a bottle of wine. Um, I actually originally started making these because I do rock and roll and I wanted some shoes to put my dance shoes in. So uh, this bag here, well these are Chris's shoes, but uh, they'll fit our dance shoes and they'll just pop in like that. The bag's really good also for crafts, so you can see how well the shoes fit in here. The bags are really good for craft hair straighteners if you want to put knitting needles in them. Um, as I said, wine bottles. So there's a wine bottle. And that makes a really nice gift bag for somebody. So if you're going visiting, you can go and make yourself a nice wine bottle gift bag. And then they get a nice bag to use later on. So whether they want to put their shoes in there or anything else. So anyway, stick around. And I'm going to show you how to make these uh, shoe bags or storage bags, expandable storage bags. And at the end, I'll show you how I price these to sell as well. And how I work out what price I'm actually going to put on it. Alright, so there's not much that we need. We need a piece of fabric that is 21 inches by 17 inches across and that is 54 by 42 centimetres roughly. And if you've got labels, stitch them on first. So if you're starting to sell, then you want to put some labels on. And I like to put my label on the short side because the short side is where the zip is going. We have a 15 inch zip which is about 38 centimetres. Now I use continuous zippers, so I just cut them to size. I'll put a zipper pull on and then we will close off the ends with a couple of scraps of fabric. For the handles, we've got an eight inch strip by two inches. So that is about 20 centimetres by five centimetres. And it, as I said, just a couple of strips of fabric. These are only five inches long, which is about 12 to 13 centimetres. And they're the width of the zip. So my zipper tape is um, a quarter, one and a quarter inches wide. So I've made sure my fabric uh, that's going on the end of my zip is as wide as the zipper tape. So one piece of fabric with a label on it if you're selling them, one for the handles and your zip and a couple of zipper tabs. Let's get sewing. Now the first thing I want to do is close up my zipper tabs so that the uh, slider doesn't go off the end. Now I've just used a scrap piece of fabric to match my zip and as I said this one is about 13 centimetres long or 5 inches long. I'm just going to fold that in half and then cut that. So all we need to do is fold this piece of fabric in half and slide the zip over the top like that. And then we're just going to stitch about a quarter of an inch from the end. Back stitch all the way down. Go over the zip a couple of times. And finish that. So what we can do now is we'll just fold this out and there is our zipper end all finished and we can trim that down. So that's our zipper tab finished to the end and that'll go right to the end of the fabric. 
and our zip won't go any further. We'll do exactly the same thing for the other side. Grab our piece of fabric, just fold it in half, straight over the top of the end of the zip there, and we'll close this up. Fold that out. And what we've done is we've closed off the raw edge of the zip and we've just made that nice and neat on the side that is actually visible from the bag, the outside of the bag. And trim that back. So we're ready now to insert the zip into the um, shoe bag or the storage bag. Now with our main piece of fabric for the bag, I've got my label facing me this way and we want to make out, work out which side we want our zip to slide. So do we want it to open that way or that way? That's personal choice. For myself, I like my zips to open in that direction there. So if this was closed, fully closed, I'd have the zip coming down and opening out that way. But it's up to yourself. Either way, what we're doing now is we're actually going to turn the zip and have that facing upside down with the end of your zipper here. Just clip that in place. What I did forget to mention is that I've actually gone and overlocked the edges of my piece of fabric. You don't have to do this and with this piece of fabric I certainly don't need to being an upholstery fabric it's not going to fray. But if you're using a regular cotton or, or normal woven fabric, I'd go and um, overlock the edges on your bag, just all the way around. So all four edges, you can go and overlock or serge. If you don't have an overlocker or a serger, just do a zigzag all the way around and that'll help prevent the edges from fraying. Back to the zip. So we've got our zipper tabs on the end. Remember to just have that folded out find my clips. So place your zipper tab just at the end of your fabric there and start clipping this in place. And what we're going to do now is put our zipper foot on and we're going to stitch this side of the zip straight down. Okay, so we're just going to back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way down. Close up the zip if you need to. Make sure your tab at the end is facing towards you so you're pulling it away from the zip. And back stitch when you get to the end. And now we can top stitch. So just turn the zip around so that the teeth are facing up and the seam is facing the main body of your bag. And stitch that all the way down. And back stitch at the end. So that's been top stitched down on the one side and that all looks really nice. And you can see how the label looks really nice against the bag just here. Now we need to put the zip onto the other side. So bring your fabric across match up the top edge of your fabric 
and I've actually cut my tab a little bit short but that's fine it's, it's going to be taken up in the seam allowance later but normally you'll have your uh, zipper tab a little bit longer you can trim off any excess so make sure you line up the edge of your fabric with the edge of the fabric on the other side and then we can stitch this zip down back stitch and we'll go all the way down and back stitch when you get to the end now open the zip out and if I turn this through can see how that will look. Now we need to top stitch this side of course. So it's a little bit more fiddly. Make sure your um, the tape of the zip is facing the main body of the bag. Raise your presser foot and just maneuver that underneath just so that you can actually start sewing. Open the bag and making sure that the zipper tape is facing the main body of the bag, top stitch all the way down. Just manipulate the fabric at the end so that you can actually finish sewing. Back stitch, and there we go. So the bag has been top stitched, and the zipper will close nicely like that. With our handle fabric, what we want to do is fold that in half lengthways. and then fold the edges in and then just fold that together so that's all enclosed And then we'll stitch this closed on both sides. Now we're ready to put the handle onto our bag. Now we want to find the center point of our bag. So fold this in half, meeting up your edges just there. Find your centre and just put a pin or a clip in place just at the centre there and we'll do the same for the other side. So we'll just take that together, put the edges of the fabric together and find the centre and just clip that in place there. The placement of your handle um, will be up to you again. Now you can see I've got my label here and I like my handle to be to the left of my um, label so that I, th I don't know I think it's just a right hand left hand thing or right brain left brain thing but uh, I like my labels in this position here with my handles at the top end up here. So my handle needs to be stitched onto the top edge here. So put your Handle fabric, raw edge to raw edge along the raw edge of your fabric. 
So when you've got your handle on your actual bag, place it down and keep the loop of the bag down like that. And so when it's sitting in your fabric, it'll just hang nicely like that. You one handle on either side of my center point. And this actually helps reduce some of the bulk near the zip. Although the zip doesn't go all the way to the end. So I'm just going to stitch that down. So your handle goes on the right side of your fabric. Now what we need to do is close up our bag. So the centre point of your bag over the centre of your bag here. So we've got the centre which is the zipper part, the middle of the zip, straight over your centre point of your bag. So you can see here there's the, the handles and there's the centre point just here. And you want this centre point here to line up with the centre of your zip, just like that. Clip it together for now and fold this out nicely, both sides, line up your edges. And then we're going to take this edge here and we're going to fold that forward. Grab your measuring guide and mark it. I've got mine marked at two inches. So you can see two inches on there. Fold your fabric forward toward the zip by two inches. And you can clip that in place and do the same for the other side. Fold that forward, measure your two inches, and clip that in place. And we'll do exactly the same for the other end. So we've got our centre point here, and we've got the centre of our zip here. We just want to line those up, clip it in place, line up the edges of your fabric, Fold it out and fold across two inches. And do the same for this side. And that's it. So we can actually sew the sides together now. But most importantly, you need to make sure your zip is open while you're doing this because if you sew your ends up before you've opened your zip, you're not going to be able to turn your bag through. So let's sew up the sides. I like to double stitch my end seams. So over the zipper section and we'll repeat this for the other side. As quick as that, your bag is completely finished. So let's turn this through. So to turn your bag through, all you need to do is turn everything around the right way and 
just start pulling on this and you can see that we'll want to just come out just keep pulling get rid of any loose threads same for the other end and pull that through so you can see a nice little pocket just there close your bag up and you can see the the little fold just on the side here and same on the other side it's nicely folded so now you have an expandable storage bag or a shoe bag really simple and very very quick to make so I like to use these four shoe bags because that's why I originally made them in the first place and I can fit my spongy old dance shoes in the bag nice and easily and I have my fan as well that'll keep me cool while I'm dancing and look if I want to be a little bit of a rebel I can probably fit a bottle of wine in there too. Let me find out. I haven't tried this before. There you go. A bag for your dance shoes and a bottle of Plonk to go with it as well. Normally what we would do what I'd recommend <laughs> This actually makes a really nice gift bag for wine bottles as well You can use this for knitting needles for your craft supplies hair straighteners You can fit your bottle of wine in there and this can just be a really nice Wine bottle gift bag the things I take into account when I'm pricing are my minimum hourly rate so I have an hourly rate of $40 an hour, and that's my minimum for anything that I will do. Uh, anything on top of that is going to be a bonus. And then I have a look and think, well, is this only a $10 item or is it a $20 item? I also take into account the cost of the goods that I have. So if I buy the fabric, I need to work out how much my fabric costs me to make this, and then I will double that price. I'll do the same thing for my zips and if I'm using strapping for handles I'll work out how much I used in that work out the value that it cost me and then I'll double that price so doubling that price takes into account the time it takes to purchase the product cut the product you know get it delivered to you and things like that and in retail most of the time in the fabric industry as a if you buy your fabric wholesale you'll usually double that price when you sell it in the shop so if I buy a piece of fabric to make something with I double the price that's just my flat rate flat rate charge out rate um, my hourly rate is $40 an hour and I won't do anything less than that so if I make three if I make four of these an hour at $40 an hour it works out $10 per bag and then I would have the cost of the zip, the cost of my label, and even though the label might only be 30 or 50 cents each, they all add up. So every time you do a dozen bags, that's however many it is by a dozen, 50 cents by a dozen. Same with your zipper sliders, they cost money and the zipper tape costs money. And if you're using strapping for your handle, that all costs you money. The other thing that costs you is um, your power, the wear and tear on your machine, the thread that you use, and just little tools that you use as well. They do all cost money. I mean, your thread snips, fine, they might only be a couple of dollars to buy, but you do go through them quickly. So you've got to factor all of those in things into your cost. These things, the thread, the power, the machine, is all part of my hourly rate. So if I make four of these an hour, that means it's $10 just to make it then I have to apply the value of the zip, the label, and the value of the fabric. And I just double that price. I'm lucky that I got six tonne of this fabric, so I got it for nothing. 
when I sell these products, I don't actually charge the customer for the fabric. Um, so I'm lucky that I'm actually just going to sell this for $20. Now, even though I can make four of these in an hour, I can actually make a lot more if I really get going. Um, and so if you work out all your bits and pieces, it might only be $12 for the whole bag by the time you put your labour in and the bits that you've purchased. But this is much better than a $12 bag. So I sell these at $20. $20 is a really good fair price in Australia for these bags. They're very, very sturdy. So even though I don't charge for the fabric, um, it probably inflates my labour rate, but I'm worth it. So uh, I think it probably works out that I would probably get about $60 to $80 an hour by the time I make all of these bags. Uh, but that's, that's all just a bonus. It's all part of doing your handmade, sewing to sell and making good profits. So there you go. These are my expandable storage bags, shoe bags, whatever you want to call them. Really, really simple to make. Uh, they, they'll earn you really good money. They're very, very popular in the shop. I've probably only been making them about 12 months and I've sold a couple of hundred of them already. So I do them online, I do them on Facebook. Um, I have a made it page in Australia. So I'll pop the links down in the comments section or in the description section below where I actually sell these and all the different color ranges that I have as well. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're um, planning on making these to sell and how you go with them as well. Catch you next time.